Hey everyone, Joe Lyons here from the Automator, and uh, I was talking with uh, Isaiah here about some of our scripts we're going to be creating. We're going to rely on people having FFmpeg, and it just you know I started thinking about like you know what's the best approach? Do we do we provide that you know executable and you know built into our script and have it automatically download, but it's also a big file. And should we do that? The problem is FFmpeg doesn't actually, I think, get installed into a given directory. So I don't want to have multiple versions of it on people's computers and worry about that. So that was what I thought. Hey, let's let's record a conversation talking about the pros and cons of different approaches. Right. Um, so on the first, you know, the first thing that I would think about is whether um, you always want to have the latest version, right? So um, one of the things that I would do right away is actually go to their page and see how often they update and what kind of updates they do. Because if they're actually kind of like um, doing minor updates frequently and they're not very important updates, um, then it might be a good idea to just download the, the have, have our script, uh, download, uh, have its own copy of FM page um and just trust that it's going to work for the next five years for example right that you're not going to be updating it very often right. now well, and, and more importantly to your point now here's the thing right clearly for the example of what we're using it it did what we wanted that's why we're using it um, exactly they'll launch a new version which is optimized and works a little better but it's probably not going to be huge improvements right and that's where it's right like exactly and, and 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 one of the 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 most important things when i actually rely on other people's code is how secure it is like for example and it is uh, this is like way too deep but i always uh, oh, think about that right away like for example very important um you have noticed that sometimes chrome gets a, a real uh, hot patch for a specific vulnerability, right? Um, that people are actually kind of targeting. And if you do not update that, you're vulnerable to that attack, right? And Chrome is something that we use very often and, and it is important for you to have the latest version. Now, FFmpeg is something that it is just for video editing and video uh, composing. Uh, hackers are not targeting that very often, right? So what I would say is like, I, I, I haven't heard about any, any controversy surrounding this particular software. So I would trust that if you stay one year without updating, um, nothing uh, bad is gonna happen to you, you know? So in that sense, I think, oh, well, just downloading it, having it in there and just relying on it to be like stable for a very long time, it's gonna be like, okay. Um, and our script from time to time, let's say, for example, if I updated it in, in a year or so, then I just download the new version and just package it with it. Um, the only thing is that that creates one uh, uh, additional problem for us as the, the script writers, which is um, people have to trust us that we're not actually making any changes to the original file, right? That's where it comes to... Um, some people like, for example, um, I have used software that is for, you know, I, I play poker and they, they have a, a, a system to keep track of all your hands and so on. And what they tell you is like, we have to download Postgres, which is a database software, right? They do not include it with their software. They actually download it. Now, it allows you to know, well, they're downloading it from the source. So I know that they're not messing with it, right? So depending on how, how much uh, your software needs to be trusted, that might be a factor that plays into whether I include the file myself or not. And um, in this case, again, it is fairly simple. It's just for editing so, uh, some videos and stuff. So I don't think people are very distrustful of that. Like, oh, I think this software is going to be changing something on the main code to actually try to access my, I, I really doubt it. So right. again, however, however right. you know, any executable, it doesn't matter what the goal of what it is, you could have it do something else entirely, right? And exactly, and that's and that's the thing. What is the what is the point? Is the spot on, right? That like it, it's a you know it just gets back to what is their perception and a right exactly, and, and, and it depends on your target audience. So how 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 um, knowledgeable are they from uh, of of you know security and stuff, and how much they care about that. 
in this particular instance, I think not much. It's just for editing video and people just usually download the most, uh, the, the, the tool that actually works best for them. And they, they really don't pay too much attention to whether the security and stuff. So in this case, I think um, the, the, the solution of having, having it packaged with the script is a good solution until something else come up. Right. You know, and another one running it as a business, right there, you know, legally, I think people could say you're rel you, you are held rel liable. If something goes wrong on your, on the computer, they might blame you. But if you say, right. Hey, go get FFmpeg over right. there. If you do it yourself, like if something happens with that particular part of my script, then it is not my fault because you download it yourself. Right. Yeah, but again, now, what are the odds that FFmpeg is going to try it? That, that, that's what I, that's the first thing I thought right now. Um, the other solution to this part, which is not like a very bad, uh, like, like, like a very um, hard to code thing is just have our script say like check for updates. And one of the things that it checks for updates is for the FFmpeg um, library. And if there is a new version, it just downloaded for you. So it takes away the fact that you have to do it yourself, you see? But at least I inform you, look, there is a new version. Right. I'm going to download it for you. Um, this oh, is the version that I'm downloading. You right. can go ahead and check, right? Yeah, well, you could say, you know, do you want me to download, you know, here is the link, you know, actually you can even describe them. You can bring up the page for them even, right? Right. Like a really simple look. Right. I, I kind of like that even better, right? It's like we can, we can put them there and get them right there and then say, save it to this folder, right? Right. And that's something that you are aware that I'm downloading something. It's not something that I'm doing sneakily, right? Um, I'm telling you where I'm downloading it from and I'm giving you the opportunity to just go ahead and check for yourself. Okay, you told me that is the new, there's a new version. Can I go ahead and myself check if there was a new version? Yeah, I could do, I could do that, right? Um, Again, that would be like the optimal solution. You package it and have this update function that actually informs the users that there's a new update for that particular library and gives them the opportunity to download them themselves or just click a button on your script and it will download it for you. And again, you can, if you are paranoid, you can go ahead and check whether there was a new version or not, right? So again, this is something that, that would be the best solution in this case and it's not that hard to code in, right? So in my case, that's what I would think about. Um, and whenever you present me with uh, situations in which we're gonna uh, um, depend on someone else's library, those are the types of things that I take into consideration. Um, so, the, yeah, go ahead, sorry. I, I, no, I was just gonna say that because uh, it is funny, but sometimes some things that you trust a lot might have a lot of issues. Like for example, uh, one of the examples is Chrome. Yeah. The reason why it has so many issues is because it's very popular and right. people target it a lot, right? right? So in that sense, I wouldn't, I for, for real, I wouldn't code my script with a Chrome installation in there because then I'm liable for every, anything that can happen with Chrome, you know? So that's something that I would really avoid. You know, it's funny because uh, Mac for years and years and years would say, hey, no, no virus, no whatever. And it's like, well, that's because no one took the time, just no one cared because no one used Macs, right? Like, right. Uh, but yeah, I, not, not making fun of them, but it just took its time. No, right? again. Time, <laughs> something that, you know, 5% of the population is using. Right. Um, and so my next question was, and I think I know the answer to this one, but I, I'd, I'd like your thoughts on it. Now, again, because I want to create simple programs that do like one thing, Right, yeah. like this one script is gonna rip out the MP3 files. This script will convert any video to an AVI, whatever it is. Right, they'll be separate, but each of those are gonna rely on FFmpeg being installed. And I think I think it's highly likely the people that get one of our programs get another one and, and get another one. Right, and here's an, another case in point. We wouldn't want to say, well, all right, now we're gonna have three different instances of FFmpeg well, same, on right. our computer. Right, so. How would you go about, like, to me, I was just thinking about it, like, you know, if we, because first thing I would do is check the registry and actually after you copy it, is there anything in the registry that actually records the path to FFmpeg? I don't think there is, but if there was, um, then we could use that and look at it, right? That's, that's a very complicated question, not because it is 
hard to do is mm -hmm. because it takes a uh, kind of like um, decisions on your part, how you're going to code most of your programs in the sense that you're thinking, well, I am going to install something, right? That is going to depend on some libraries. And I expect that some other of my programs are also going to rely on that, right? So that's something on your part. That's the reason why on Windows, you have this thing called the program data folder, right? Now, uh, thinking like a big company, let's talk about Adobe. So Adobe has different types of software, right? And it is very likely that some of those software rely on the same components, right? So they have this folder, program data, the Windows has this folder in which Adobe puts its common components in there. So if you installed one Adobe software, for example, one of the things that is shared among um, most Adobe products is the Adobe Bridge. The Adobe Bridge allows you to kind of like uh, pass media between the software, right? Um, in an easy manner. So Bridge is used by m several of their software instead of each software installing that by itself, what they would do is just in program data, they install an instance of, of bridge and whatever software you install just checks that that bridge folder is there, right? And in that case, like it is kind of like a common, a common source for all of my files. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, and this is, this is from years ago, but when I looked into it, I think it was done with like DLLs um, that would common DLLs that would be required by different things. And right. if there was somewhere it would increment so it would know this has been installed by four, five, six. When I say installed, I don't mean it's reinstalling that DLL, but it's keeping track of how many programs had relied right. on it. So uh -huh. when you go to uninstall, it, it checks would... off. And then finally, when you're down to the last one, it actually would remove that DLL um, or you know whatever it is. Yeah, and that's what I mean. So it is it is a, kind of like a decision on your part, which um, would make it your code would have to be thought out, thought out a little bit better. You cannot just simply code it like however you want. But um, in this case, you would have to have a way, like you just mentioned, to keep track of how many of them are actually relying on, the, on that file. And if you only install one of them, just don't delete it, right? Um, but then again, um, most of the, um, if they're just like really simple software, there is no harm on having each of them their own copy because it, it takes away this, this other uh, architectural thing that you have to think about how to solve this other problem and so on. So it takes away that, but there, yeah, you have like, the same uh, different version of the same software well it depends one megabyte is not that big of a deal right um now if you're talking about 500 megabytes on each install i would understand your concern but if it is just like a library like this one uh, that 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 doesn't make any any difference you can just install the same um at least one version of ffmpeg and it's 66 megs which right th it's it's still to me when today's hard drive sites that's nothing right so right I, yeah, right. So basically, it, it is not like that big of a deal. Now, um, I, and again, what you have to think about is how many how many people are going to install five of your software that right. all of them actually yeah. use the FFMP, right? So um, it would be something that, again, I would say like you start with a simple form, and then when the data comes in, like okay, I have a lot of people who are installing ten scripts and all of them have the same thing over and over again well let's just fix that when that particular problem comes along mm -hmm. um because i really doubt that you're gonna have like a big issue with that and it is not that uh that bad of an idea just to have its own version because i know that's the one that is working right um because what might happen is that um if they all rely on the same right but one of your software is a little bit more advanced and relies on some features that has been added recently. Right. Then the version that you have installed the first time is too old, doesn't have that. And then you're going to break your script. You see what I mean? 
So well, then, then now you have to check what the version installed is, and then you have to replace it, and you know those kind of things. Yeah. Um, so there's there's no right answer to that question, right? And my solution would be like go with the flow. Start installing its own version, their own versions until you figure out that that's actually a problem. Then you say, look, well, let's fix that other problem now. Right. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, like I said, I thought this was an interesting thing to talk through because uh, uh, it is a you know somewhat common thing. There's a lot of really great tools out there that um, like FFmpeg is a perfect example. It does amazing stuff, but there's so many people that are just afraid of the command prompt and just don't want to you know, mess with it. That with AutoHockey, we can make some simple GUIs, allow people to use it, um, and yet, uh, yeah. we don't have to create, I mean, FFMP, I can't imagine how much time is put and put into that tool because it does. Uh, well, uh, this has been, a long, this has been around for a long time. Eh? So that, that's that. But the other thing is that, um, it's not only about that. The command prompt is difficult to use. It's just that, you know, saving time. If I could just click a button and it does what I want, instead of having to type several commands, it actually, it makes uh, a little bit uh, more sense to me to just have a button that says rip out the video and it does it while in the command prompt, I have to load the video, tell it where it's going to be, take this part, how many, what's the bit rate is going to be, uh, you know, like there's like a lot of things that you have to do, right? Just to do this one task, right? Oh, that's so, well. But case in point, which is that that's where you were, you're really going, right? Is well, what if I have 20 videos? Right? Like now I have to do it for each one of these videos. Even if I get my template down with the syntax, it's still a pain to kind of swap it out each time, right? And so in this case, um, the the GUI version of it, um, what you have to think about is the types of software that exist. So this is something that I. Um, have been thinking about recently because then I understood some things uh, regarding, for example, um, Geek Dude's uh, um, library for Chrome, right? And I was thinking like, why does he throw so many exceptions, right? Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? Like, it, it, right? <laughs> no, no, no. And I, and I was like, okay, let me figure that one out because I'm not like a, 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 this amazing computer programmer. I have to learn, right? So I, I, I'm like, why is he doing that? Is he wrong or am I wrong? So I started figuring it out. Now, I figured out that there are some layers of software. One of them is the lowest layer that has to do the ones that are closest to the hardware, right? Those are libraries, like for example, the GDI library that actually connects almost directly with the hardware. And there is this intermediate level in which you actually solve most of the problems. And there's this high level, which is what the user sees, right? Okay, now, if you're coding software for the lower level, which are most libraries, and this is actually a library, you want it to perform fast, reliably, and that every single error you get gets reported. That's what you do, right? Now, in the middle part of the code, you solve different issues, but on the top part, which is what the user sees, right? Then you don't want those errors to reach the customer, right? Those, those exceptions that he throw in, I have to handle them. I have to handle them and know what to do with those errors. So what he's doing is perfectly correct. He's doing a library and he's throwing exceptions because you have to handle the exceptions. That's what incorrect, happens. And correct me if I'm wrong. The thing is, if you, so let's keep the focus on you, right? You're right. I'm the one using your, I don't want to see any of this crap, right? Right. <laughs> but for you, when you're using Geek Dude stuff, if he didn't throw the exceptions, it's just a blind hole. You're like, right, exactly. Like something failed and I don't know what failed, yeah, right? right? Exactly. So as a programmer, I have to know that is a library code. It is supposed to throw a lot of exceptions. The one who has to handle it is me. But then when you go to the forums, you do not have a lot of developers. What you have is a lot of people who right. just want to use the thing and right. that it works, right? That's that's what you're that was, that's what they're expecting, right? So it's not wrong what he's doing. It's actually very correct. What is wrong is what the people are expecting. What I was expecting is like I use your library and it works. Well, that's not what it's supposed to do, man. <laughs> the library should just give you the access to the tools 
yeah. and you have to handle the errors. In this yeah. case, uh, just to bring it back to the FFMPEG, right. this is a library code. And this is supposed to give you access to a bunch of things, which you can do from the command prompt, right? Now, this, you have to convert it into something that a user does not have to handle any of that. That's where the GUI comes in. The GUI is a, a way for you to make it simple for a user to use it without all the errors, without all the things. So in your case, what you have to think is, okay, I download this library. It has a lot of command prompt to do. I'm going to do that for you. And I'm going to make it simple for you to look nice, simple to use, and it is not going to give you any complaints. It's going to work. That's what is going to happen, right? So uh, when you have this in mind, then you have to know this thing. You can download um, any version of it that does exactly what you need. And you can keep that version so long as you're not actually adding new features. Yeah. If you're going to add new features, then yeah, you have to update the code, right? But if you're not adding a lot of features, what, what, it, what it's going to do is just rip out the videos. It is doing that right? Is it doing it right? Yeah, okay, then it can stay like that, right? That That's it, that's what I needed. <laughs> that's yeah, what I now, need. <laughs> now, it's, it's possible there might be a new video format come out that's not, you know, wasn't available at the time. Um, right. and that's when you're like, oh, okay. Then you go ahead and say like, well, let's just update the version of the library that I was using because I want to um, uh, uh, have this new uh, uh, video format in my software. Yeah, that's okay. Perfect. And so anyone else, if you guys have any questions, please comment, you know, please also subscribe or like this video. But, uh, you know, let us know if you have any other questions on this topic or other topics you want us to cover because I, like I said, I always learn best discussing things with other people, especially people that know what yeah. they're doing, right? Like, um, but this, yeah, I I any sort of thing you, you want us to cover, let us know. Thanks again. Perfect. Thanks, Cheers. Bye.